You want to build web applications in Python, but you're not sure which of the frameworks you should use to do that. You're reading about the pros and cons of Flask versus Django versus Fast API, but you never get to coding because you're stuck in analysis paralysis. And this is not just a case for projects. Maybe you want to learn how to build web applications in Python, but you want to make sure that you make the best choice, the perfect choice. You don't want to waste your time learning the wrong thing after all right? Or you already know all of the three technologies, but you're starting a new project and you're not sure which of these is the best choice for your specific use case. In all of these cases, this video is perfect for you. I'm going to resolve all the confusion by giving you a detailed breakdown so you can get out of your analysis rut and start coding, building, or learning. We'll compare Flask, Django, and Fast API by looking at their philosophies, listing pros and cons, looking at typical use cases, and also seeing actual real-life projects and companies that are using the respective frameworks in production. For this, we'll actually use reliable sources, not some random blog posts that claim that Flask is used in Lyft, Reddit, and Patreon without citing any primary sources. So if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. But now, let us get right into it. Now, there's one thing I would like to highlight before we jump into the comparison, which is that in any case, you should be learning all three of these frameworks. You should know how to build Flask applications, how to build Django applications, and how to build fast API applications. In addition to that, you should go beyond Python, learn a language like Go, learn Java if you want to, learn any backend language that is not Python, because the goal here is not to specialize in a single framework or language. Don't try to be a Flask developer, a Django developer, or a Fast API developer. Of course, you can have a preferred tool of choice, but the goal is to have multiple tools in your arsenal and to pick the right tool for the job. So no matter what you get out of this comparison, the goal should be to learn all of them, to learn multiple tools and not to specialize in a single one of them. Having said all that, let us get started by taking a look at Flask. Now, Flask markets itself as a lightweight micro framework. Now, micro in this case doesn't mean it doesn't have any capabilities or it can only be used for micro web applications. It just means it comes with basically nothing out of the box. You basically have to do everything yourself. You can compare it to be a little bit like Arch Linux, where you get some basic tools into your hands and then you have to build everything yourself. Now, there are extensions that you can use. There's stuff that you can add. But overall, Flask is a blank canvas. You can do everything you want with it. It's maximally flexible. It has no structure. It's not opinionated. Do whatever you want with it. It is specifically designed to make getting started quick, easy, and straightforward. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Flask is the perfect framework for beginners because that freedom, this lack of structure, can be very overwhelming for someone who doesn't know how to structure a project and how to follow best practices. Also, similar to an Arch Linux way of life, if you want to have any features that go beyond the very, very basics, you need to either build them yourself or you need to use extensions from the community. Now, the Flask community is quite large, so you will find a lot of extensions and a lot of things that you can use that other people have already built. But still, you follow the philosophy of nothing is shipped out of the box. If you want to have user authentication, a logging system, uh, anything that goes beyond just having a web server and basic routes, you need to build it or use something that someone else has built already. In general, Flask is the perfect framework for building small projects, prototypes, and microservices that most likely won't experience heavy user load. I myself am currently building an application for my startup. And while the current tech stack is using Django, initially I prototyped the application using Flask because it's just easy to quickly build something in Flask, to see that it works, to build a proof of concept, to show it to people, to see if they're interested in it. And once you get the confirmation, once you decide that you actually want to build the application and scale it professionally, then I think it's more reasonable most of the time to transition to something else like Django. Now, of course, all of this doesn't mean that we cannot build solid large web applications in Flask. We just need to be aware of the trade-offs. For example, Netflix uses Flask, or to be precise, Script Flask for microservices in their backend. Pinterest built a content moderation platform called PinQ using Flask. The entire monitoring tool called Apache Airflow, which is, as far as I know, developed by Airbnb, is built with Flask. The discovery service for Lyft, which is now archived was built in Flask and Zalando built their own framework called Connection on top of Flask. Now online, you will find a lot of unrealistic claims. I cannot disprove them, but Stackshare and blog posts are not the best source to 
look up which technology is used by which company. The ones that I listed here are confirmed by primary sources, so I'm going to limit myself to those. As you can see, Flask is actually used in production by actual companies, but of course, mostly it's used for prototyping and microservices. That's where it excels. Now let us move on to Django, which markets itself with the slogan for perfectionists with deadlines. It's a high level Python web framework and the complete opposite of Flask. It is very opinionated, which means it tells you how to do stuff. There's a right way to do things in Django. There's an already pre-existing structure and it follows the batteries included approach. This means that there are a lot of features already shipped with Django by default. For example, user authentication, forms, admin features, a built-in object relational mapper, powerful CLI tools, and more. It is modular, secure, and professional. And as I said, the opposite of minimal. A lot of stuff is shipped already by default. I would argue that Django is probably the best Python web framework for building large enterprise applications. And if we take a look at some blog posts from official engineering teams of large companies, we can see that Django is actually being used like this. The Instagram engineering team says that it currently features the world's largest deployment of the Django web framework. Atlassian's Bitbucket Cloud is a Django Python monolith. Eventbrite is one of the largest Django powered sites. The add-on store from Mozilla is a large Django application and the monitoring tools Sentry is a monolithic Python Django application as well. If you want to use Django to build APIs and not entire web applications, you can also use things like Django REST framework or Django Ninja. As I mentioned, I'm personally using Django in my startup. To be precise, I use Django Ninja because I only need the API for the back end. Then I use React in the front end to interact with the API. But I choose Django because I want something that's reliable that is secure, that is professional, and I'm not really looking for the most powerful, most optimized high performance tool on the market. So in a nutshell, Django is the complete opposite of Flask. Use it if you want to have something secure, professional for large applications with lots of features shipped out of the box. Finally, we have Fast API, which primarily markets itself as high performance. It also mentions that it's easy to learn, fast to code and ready for production, but the focus is clearly on performance and speed. This performance mainly comes from the fact that Fast API is asynchronous by default and they claim that their performance is similar to that of Node.js and Go. In terms of complexity and how opinionated Fast API is, I would put it between Django and Flask, but closer to Flask because it is quite minimal. It does come with some batteries included, and it does have some opinions on how things have to be done. For example, you have to use type Python using Pydantic, but overall is quite minimalistic and doesn't give you a lot of stuff out of the box. A clear distinction though between Fast API and the other two is Fast API clearly focuses only on building APIs. You don't build full web applications with Fast API, you focus purely on the backend. Fast API is the perfect tool for building APIs and microservices that are going to experience high user loads. A typical example of this would be deploying a machine learning model and wrapping an API around it so the public can use it. When you go to the Fast API website, you can see that big tech companies are using Fast API for exactly that. Microsoft is using it for ML services, Uber is using it for prediction and an ML API, and Netflix is using it for some framework called Dispatch. Also, the ChatGPT retrieval plugin is fully built with Fast API. So, in a nutshell, the decision should be quite easy in 99% of cases. Do you need to build something quickly? Do you want to prototype something? Do you want to build a quick microservice? Do you need maximum flexibility? Go with Flask. Do you need a large scale, professional, secure enterprise web application with a lot of features already built in? Go with Django. If you want to use it for an API, Django Ninja, Django REST framework. Do you need something high performant? Are you going to build an API, a microservice? Are you going to deploy a machine learning model? Are you expecting a lot of traffic? go with fast API. In general, of course, using other languages and other frameworks that are not Python based might even be a better choice. But I would say fast API is probably the closest to go and Django is probably the closest to something like Java or C sharp. But again, my opinion is learn all of them, be able to code applications using all of them. And if you're trying to learn, if you're trying to get started to learn any of them, pick any one of them. It doesn't matter. Start with Flask, Django, or Fast API. Roll a dice if you want to, flip a coin. It doesn't matter. My opinion is you should learn them all 
anyway. By the way, on this channel, I have two crash courses, one for Flask and one for Fast API. If you want to learn one of the two, make sure to check them out. And in the future, I'm also going to do a Django crash course. But that's it basically for this video today. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.